Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video well I'm just going to remind you the three books that are on sale drink tea and read the paper if you're a green belt and a black belt and you want simple instruction on how to apply your skill design of experiments for 21st century engineers and finally a statistical process control for small batch production. They are all available from lulu.com and the links are in the video below. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video newsletter, well it's very apt today's subject because it's about, well it's about simplifying complexity. Um, I'm just going to call it simplification I think um, and this really wasn't motivated necessarily uh, by me although my channel is called complexity made simple and my approach to engineering is complexity made simple my, com my approach to Six Sigma is complexity made simple this is a direct result of me bumping into a video on um, on YouTube. I'm going to leave the link to the video uh, below because, uh, to be honest, there was only I think there was 170 views on this video. It's only two minutes long, I think, but and it's just a head, a guy talking. Um, but the guy just says something just simple but fantastic um, the guy's name is Anthony King and he works at Raytheon the video by the way is eight years old um, he's at a conference and basically he's asked about simplification and he says well at Raytheon we make it like a board level measure if you're gonna conduct a project and you're gonna bring in a new piece of software you're going to bring in a new process. You're going to bring in automation. They ask a very simple question. Will it simplify the process? And if the answer is no, then why are we going to do it? About, um, well, the general topic was managing complexity. And you talked about instead of managing it, actually trying to control it. Can you talk a little bit more about what that means? Yeah, actually, our focus is actually on reducing complexity. Okay. I know it sounds like it should be standard practice for everyone, but it's usually not. It's about bringing in new technologies and things, adding complexity to it. But one of the questions we ask on anything that we do, whether it be a process, technology, or service, is how is it going to reduce the existing complexity? And if you're not going to reduce any complexity, then we sort of question why are we actually bringing it in. Okay. So that's one of our biggest um, hurdles to bringing anything into the company is understanding how we can actually reduce the complexity, okay. not just add to it. Right, and you mentioned that this is actually a board level concern. It's it's discussed at the board level in your company. I mean, what what form does it take? Because it can be so complex, okay. obviously. Um, in our company, it takes the form of each of the businesses are given a a driver to actually reduce the complexity in their business and report back on areas they've actually reduced complexity. Hmm. So each business has to report a number of things they've done to reduce the complexity within the business. And it has to be quantitative. So they actually have to show where the complexity actually was removed from the business. And we have a, a quota for each of the business each year that we have to actually make. That's and interesting. Just think, yeah, fantastic. I wish more senior board level people would think with this clarity would think with this clarity because here's what you are doing in most companies in most companies you have reality in fact you have complex manufacturing reality and you realize you haven't got a flipping clue what's going on. Process is super complicated. You're not making the right decisions on the right day. Customers are waiting for things. Our on time in full is not great. Our late deliveries are terrible. Customers are complaining, etc., etc. It's a disaster. So what do you do? Well, what you should do 
is simplification. Now what you could do is lean. You could do some lean stuff. You could do some fabulous visual management. Set up some, some pull rules that just simplify the whole damn process. Make everybody's job easy. So the decision, what job do I work on next? It's clear and unambiguous. You know which job to work on so that it links with everybody else's decisions. Everybody's gonna be making similar decisions. Work is gonna flow really fast through your manufacturing reality. You've simplified the process and you're gonna make more money. But that isn't what you decide to do, is it? Now, what senior executives decide to do is this. We've got complex manufacturing reality, which we don't understand. So here's what we'll do. We'll buy a computer. So now what we've got is complex Now what you've got is a complex manufacturing model that's supposed to represent that. So now I've got two complicated systems, one in reality and one on a computer. And guess what? You don't understand either of them, do you? And they never match up. So when this one says there's parts missing, this one says there isn't parts missing or vice versa, You've got errors in the system, so trying to make these two talk to one another, match up, is a flipping nightmare. What did you do? Yeah, you didn't simplify, did you? Now you made it more complicated, because making it more complicated always works, doesn't it? And then what we do is we fire an MES system at this. It's not working, so now we got MES system measuring all this crap here. Um, this one, probably cost you three million quid. The MRP system here, usually it's SAP. Yeah, or it's Oracle. Neither of them work, by the way. SAP and Oracle, this one probably cost you the north of about five million quid. You got technical people working on this over here. This is all waste, by the way. Working on a flipping computer is waste. The customer's waiting for goods out of your factory and you're busy making everything more complicated so that you're never going to produce anything that the customer wants. And that guy just said a great thing, simplification. Measure it against simplification. Um, I mean, my simplification uh, that I got from a, a demand-driven MRP conference a few years ago, my simplification is this. There is only one measure that matters in your factory and that is flow time. Every decision you make, every decision that the buyer makes, every decision that the engineer makes, every decision that the planner makes, if it increases the flow time, it shouldn't be allowed. If it decreases the flow time, it should be welcomed and implemented instantly. Flow time is a fantastic simplification. And if flow time was your aim, you would never buy these dumb computerized systems that actually do one thing. They lock the flow time in. Because this model has a fixed flow time. It's based on all the data that you've put in, things like batch sizes, minimum order quantities, all of that sort of thing. If you try and run faster than this thing, this will slow you down. It fixes the time based on the model that you put in there. And you can never improve when you've attached a computer to your reality. Simplify your process, apply lean, apply flow time, and you will make bucket loads of cash.